This video is to explain experiment K3, which is the kinetics of the reaction of peroxidisulfate and iodide. These, react, these two react in their clear colorless solutions to produce um, tetracyanide and also iodine, the, which is a colored product. You'll be monitoring the course of this reaction by the production of iodine. The solutions, when you mix them, look like water, and as time passes, they will get browner and browner. You'll be actually monitoring that using a spectrophotometer, which you've already run across in previous courses. The reaction has two parts, excuse me, the experiment has two parts. First of all, you need to calibrate the spectrophotometer. And to do that, you need to make up a series of solutions of iodine, or I3 minus, of known concentration. To do that, we have a stock solution of, I of iodine here. As you can see, if I put something white behind it, it's slightly yellow colored. And you will take various volumes of the iodine solution and add potassium nitrate in AI to it, and you will get more and more dilute solutions. I've got one of them ready to go here. Let's start up the spectrophotometer. We'll turn it on, first of all, and we're monitoring this at 415 nanometers. It's actually at 415, but if you need to change it, this is the knob that you use to change it. And make sure the filter is in the right place. It's for 340 to 599, so again, this has been preset. At the moment, as you see, there's nothing in the sample container. And so with this set to percent transmittance, we can change the mode that's in with this button. You want to have it in percent in transmittance and use the left-hand knob to set it to zero. We're telling the photo cell that this is what blackness looks like, that you should give a zero reading for this. I'll now take a solution of Ki, which is colorless, and put it in. Make sure I line up that white bar to the tick at the front, close the lid, and that's 105. It's not quite set. Put this to absorbance and adjust the other end with this knob. I'm going the wrong way. And I want to set this one to zero absorbance. This is 100%, that's all of the light coming through, no light being absorbed. So this is now calibrated. Take that out, take one of my iodine solutions, pop it in, let this stabilize, and it has an absorbance of 0.181. You will make up a series of six or seven different concentrations of iodine with different absorbances, and you'll construct a calibration curve. Let's look at the board to see what one of those is going to look like. That's absorbance, and this is concentration of I2, which is exactly the same as I3 minus. A blank solution will be zero, and it will increase. Now, you may actually get something up there. That's not actually a straight line. It's linear here, and then it curves off. So make sure that you don't try and force a ruler through all of these data points. Some of them will be in a straight line if Beer's law is being observed. But if it is flattening out, make sure that your calibration curve actually curves. Once we've got this calibration curve ready, and this will translate absorbance into actual concentration of iodine produced, we're now ready to run the actual reactions. We now have to make up a series of solutions. You're going to be running six reactions, A, B, C, D, E, F. And in the first series, A, B, C, you're going to be changing the initial concentration of iodide. That's one of the reactions and keeping the concentration of uh, peroxidisulfate constant. So you will also have some distilled water in there and some potassium nitrate to make it a constant total volume. I've got the distilled water and potassium nitrate in there now, 
and I'm going to dispense six mils. I need a, a waste beaker here to kill that. Okay. And do I have a Bureau Reader card here? All right. Read that and then dispense. I'm dispensing six mils of. So oh, 16, 22 of iodide here. Oops. Let's move this up so that I actually read it. Okay. So this is now ready to go, and the other reactant is peroxidisulfate, and this one I'm going to be dispensing by pipette. So I want 10 mils of this, so pipetting. Come on. Here we go into a second flask. Eight, nine, ten. All right. So these are now ready to mix. And this is where it's better if you've got two people working on it. As soon as you're ready to go, start and mix the two back and forth. Two or three times. Now pour these into a cuvette. If you happen to get a splash, wipe it off and pop it in and read. And you'll notice that not a whole lot there. Take this out. Hold it in a beaker of room temperature water until the next time comes up that you need to read it. To, because if this is an exothermic, endothermic reaction, you want to keep the temperature reasonably constant. And then we're getting down to one minute. So pop it back in. Three, two, one, read, 0.38, and take this out and hold it. And continue until you have reached the end of the appropriate time span. Then you will take a second set of chemicals and again, mix them for t equals zero, read initially, and continue to read at the appropriate timed intervals that you have. The reactions will be slightly different proportions of the different reactants. For A, B, and C, you're changing the initial concentration of iodide. For D, E, and F, you're keeping iodide constant and increasing the concentration of peroxidisulfate. In all cases, it's the same reaction. It will produce iodine. They will go darker brown with time. And that is how you perform the kinetics of peroxidisulfate iodide as monitored on a spectrophotometer.